All right, so welcome to the Hood Journal Podcast. So the people that you see in front of me are a couple of my friends that are journalism and broadcast majors at my school, SUNY Oswego. And we're here to talk about a couple of topics that we feel like need to be addressed in terms of what can be changed within the school's media orgs, and then just a couple of generic topics that I want my friends to get off their chest. So we're going to start off with an introduction. We're going to go from left to right. So who are you? All right, so my name is Justin Clint. I'm a junior here at Sony Oswego. I'm a broadcasting major, and I'm from Queens. Gotcha. Um, my name is Matthew Frank. I'm also a junior. Um, I'm a journalism major, and I'm from the Bronx. Cool. My name is Naya. I'm a broadcasting major, and I'm from Brooklyn. My name is Bree. I'm a broadcasting major, and I'm a senior on her way out soon. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm Peyton. Um, Peyton Ashford. I'm a broadcasting major with a minor in sports studies. Okay. Um, from Chicago. Cool. Thank you guys for introducing yourself. So, I want to break the ice. I want to start off with a question that Peyton asked before we got on the camera. What do you guys hope to do with your major once you leave school? All right. So, what I want to do with my major when I leave school is honestly, I want to be like, in like deep into the entertainment television industry. So. I want to be like the person who has their own show. Like that's the, that's the number one goal. Like to get my own show, my own talk show. Like some for someone like David Letterman, who had mm-hmm. his own talk show with like the band on the side. Just like you know, just vibe like real people. Because I feel like that in the media industry, there's a lot of fake fake shit mm-hmm. that goes down in the media industry. And like I just want to be that show where it's like you could come to you could come to this show, feel safe, and feel like the real vibes that's coming from everybody. So. I, I definitely want to do something with that, but then like I guess to start out, I just want to be like a, a anchor or reporter for like any of the news networks, mm-hmm. just to get my foot in the door. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so, oh. I'm sorry. I name you should look into Trevor Noah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But talk to me, Matthews. Um, my goal after you know after we go to college is I want to go work for ABC News in the city. Um, so like I, I think I know Eyewitness News. I want to work yeah. for them. Um, at least be an anchor reporting, you know, start off small, make my way up, and then eventually, once I get my foot in and I know what I'm doing, I want to have my own news show or like, like some David Muir, Anderson Cooper type stuff, where like, you know, I just, I, like, I really dive into the news and what's currently happening and stuff like that. Um, me, I'm, as a sophomore, I'm still kind of dabbling into what I want to do, but for the most part, I think I want to do um, social media and digital management. So, like, I'm into music, so, like, music organizations such as Revolt, Genius, or Fuse, mm-hmm. things of that sort. Cool. Well, for me, I definitely want to be in the entertainment industry, specifically entertainment news as a reporter, you know, red carpet live, coverage, hosting, interviewing, etc. And, you know, starting off, I'm going to be working as a news producer. Dope. Congratulations. Thank you. So, um, like almost everyone said, well, not everyone, but I, I also have a passion for entertainment reporting and anchoring. Um, down the line, I, I can see myself working for ABC, like a hosting for like Dance with the Stars or um, Entertainment Tonight, MTV, anything like anything of that sort. Um, I'm also graduating this weekend and I have a potential job offer in Syracuse at New Shannon Mac. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Cool. Thank you guys for introducing okay. yourself. So basically, what I ask my friends to do today is come to today's conversation with like a question or like a topic that they want to ask everybody, I guess, on the panel. Um, and just, just a conversation that they feel like needs to be had. So basically, just giving them my platform for them to speak their mind. So I guess I'll start off with Justin. Justin, what is the question that you want to ask everybody or that you want to be addressed? Um, it's, I don't think I really have a question. It's more of a topic. Okay. But, you know, of course, you know, what I've been through with, basically, I've had a situation where I did not feel included in a very important interview with Al Roker. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I feel like just WTOP as a whole could work on inclusion when it comes to diverse, like, minorities mm-hmm. and just like, having diversity in the, or, the media organization as a whole and it's like because I know everyone here has been in WTOP and they felt like the same pain I felt when it comes to like oh like why is this person like excluding me or like why am I getting treated like this mm-hmm. but it's like for the most part you know the, at the end of the day there needs to be a change to that because 
you know, people, there's broadcast majors that are minorities that need to like be involved to have their experience so that when they go out to the real world, they're not lost. You know, there's a lot of people that graduate from here with no WCOP experience or just like no experience within an actual media organization. Mm -hmm. And then they go out in the real world, they're just like, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how to do that. But they were still too uncomfortable to join WCOP because of like how it's run. Mm -hmm. So I definitely wanna like just change in that. And it's like, when it comes to like inclusion, um, shout out Keeks for actually pitching this idea. Mm -hmm. So like, like the chief of inclusion to yeah. making sure everyone feels included in the show. Like in whatever they're doing, like whether it's like an original production, whether it's uh, entertainment news, whether it's regular nightly news, you know, whether it's um, reporting, like I feel like there needs to be a person like asking, like, yo, like, do you feel included? Like, do you feel comfortable? And do you feel like it's a safe space to, that you can speak your mind, that you could just talk comfortably around others and exchange ideas? Someone to check in. Yeah, someone to check in, basically. But does anyone else have something to say yeah. about that topic? I agree. I think the conversation that we had today will eventually, it opens ears for the PWI, um, especially those in TOP, because like I had said before, I do think that, um, you know, there, there has been a lack of diversity and due to the fact that, you know, they're in, I guess, their own little circle, they don't really realize, sometimes they're oblivious to the fact of what's going on. And so voicing that, hopefully it will, um, you know, better, and op it, it will make better opportunities for people of color who are broadcasting majors to come into TOP and feel welcome. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, oh, oh, no, no, okay. I wanted to comment on what you said earlier about how people graduate from Oswego as broadcast majors with, well, a degree in broadcasting with no experience in WTOP, and I hate that because from my experience, I've learned so much through WTOP, and I, I feel like I've gained a nice amount of experience and exposure of working for working as a um, camera operator, teleprompter operator, uh, reporter, anchor, uh, assistant producer, producing. So I just feel like it's such, WTOP has such like a the 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 platform is there. It's just yeah. not you, you know what I mean. It's just not, it's just diversified. not diversified enough, yeah. and I hate that because I feel like I, I would encourage other. Uh, students of color, specifically specifically black students, to join. A, it's a great organization. I feel mm -hmm. like they have um, nice equipment, mm -hmm. very good um, um, uh, supplies. And, you yeah. know what I mean? Have a, a lot of supplies. Yeah, a lot and of resources. Um, things to support us. And if I hate that students aren't taking advantage of that because they don't feel included, which is not like which is so completely understandable. Mm -hmm. um, so. I 100% agree with you, Payne, is, um, is the truth, honestly. When I joined WTOP, like, it was an experience for me, like, no other, because that was my first time being in front of camera and doing stuff like that, even though, like, I knew I wanted to do that for the rest of my life. Um, WTOP taught me mad stuff about, like, you know, um, posture, how you got to sit up exactly. and stuff when you get on the news, right. how to dress up, how to speak, stuttering. Mm -hmm. It was because of WTOP that I had to go get glasses because I couldn't <laughs> see the teleprompter. <laughs> it's just little stuff like that WTOP taught me that I'm, like, I'm forever grateful about. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, just connecting back to like the diversity and stuff like that, I feel like since not a, not enough of us are there, they got so confident with doing their own thing and becoming their own clicks and stuff, and that's why they are what they are now. It's kind of what you said um, earlier, Bree, where you was like, um, we gotta take up space. That stuck with me because it's honestly the truth. We do gotta take up space in order to end that clickiness and have it be like everybody just talking to everybody and everybody feels comfortable, a comfortable space. We gotta start like making our mark, putting ourselves out there right. in order for all of us to be, you know, successful. successful. Yeah, exactly. And um, definitely, I feel like Oswego and many other colleges are giving us so, a great opportunity. We're actually giving us an organization that lets us give the news out to our school. I know a lot of schools don't do that. No. So the fact that like we got Oswego that gives us a nicely, nicely looking studio with great equipment okay. and people to do it, like we should be, we should be thankful for that, yeah. grateful for that. And I feel like everybody who's a part of like journalism, broadcast, communication, and that, that should take advantage of this because, as I said earlier, when you're out in the real world and you know it's your time to do what you gotta do, 
with the, without mm. that experience is gonna be it's hard. Difficult. It's very difficult. Yeah. It's very yeah. difficult, especially since we're black at that. Yeah. <laughs> so and you know, um, I've connected and speak to like previous like alumni who went to school, mm -hmm. and it's literally the same thing that we go through. Mm. When they were in WTOP, they went through the same thing. They're mm. like, it's a white boys club. Like mm. they yeah. ignore white people. Like they ignore the black people. Like there's this, there's that. So it's like I think that alone shows like how there was no effort for it to be done mm -hmm. you know and and i think another thing another thing that plays a role into it is the fact of like broadcasting is a very competitive market so it's like in addition to like that it's like it's every man for itself everybody yeah. wants to be the best everybody's only thinking about themselves yeah. and it shouldn't be that way it shouldn't, it shouldn't have, have to yeah. it shouldn't have to because there's really room for everybody to grow and really to eat you know mm -hmm. and i think for us like it's already one thing coming into an area where it could be intimidating to learn all the equipment but on top of that where you have people who are giving you microaggressions who are just being like you know rude and stuff mm -hmm. it's gonna make you feel small mm -hmm. so you're gonna play mm -hmm. small yeah. you know what i'm saying so that's why i always just think i'm talking about being able to take up the space because even though it's not one of us all the equipment is there like we all came for the same reason mm -hmm. you just gotta come in put your head down do the work, put get it done, up. put your head up, right? <laughs> they just come in, like, do the work, despite all the stuff that happens sometimes, which is a problem, but at the end of the day, you're there for a reason, mm -hmm. and just be able to focus on that and accomplish that. Exactly. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we all need the experience. Like, yeah. that, that, like we all need this to succeed. Right. So it's like, if you're, you're not making us comfortable enough that we can feel that we need the resources to do what we need to do when we get out of college, like, that's a problem. Right. That's a big yeah. problem. Yeah. The school is, one thing about the school, they gon they love Aroka. Showing up the most oh, prominent really? alumni. The most prominent oh, alumni. Yeah. They love milking his name dry. Truthfully <laughs> speaking. Yeah. They love talking about it. how we have the most prominent media organizations. Mm -hmm. Like all of it looks so good on paper, but it's like when you dig deeper and talk about like the other like other students who are just are not white, yeah. what about them? Like yeah. how are they involved? Like what's mm -hmm. going on? Even like behind the scenes, it's really is mad white people. Like yeah. where's the people of color? Where's the black people? And oh, to add, yeah, I don't know. If we, I don't know if we want to move on to the next topic, but you brought up a good point too. With I've learned that over you know out of my four years here at S V, I've learned that like broadcast is not the type of it, although it is competitive. I like they they really emphasize how competitive broadcast in the industry is. Mm -hmm. However, it's a team. Yeah. When you work yeah. at a station, you can't. Uh, 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 anchor isn't gonna be able to read the teleprompter without the person that's operating the tele. Whether yeah. it's the producer or this, it's the personal graphics. Whether it's the personal audio and sound. Whether it's, like it's, it's I, I've learned that it's, broadcasting is a team. It's a really like you need to be able to work. Is. Yeah, you need to be able to work with other people. And I, I that is one flaw I, I um can see in them two mm -hmm. It's like a one man like uh yeah, one 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 yeah. oh yeah, yeah. All, and, everybody on their own and it shouldn't be that way in addition to that also i just noticed and recognize a lot of like pretentious energy where people feel like they're better than people like they're mm -hmm. higher and stuff and it's like everybody has their flaws everybody has their strengths everybody has their weaknesses so it's like i think that energy contributes to like the toxic culture that could be there sometimes where you have someone who thinks they're pretty much the shit and knows everything and right. you have the person who wants to come to you to learn from you because they see what you're good at and they give you your props for that mm -hmm. but they don't feel comfortable wanting to do so because like they're they have the fear of like being dismissed or like you know being um like you being condescending towards them mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah right matthews would well, thank justin thank you for that mm -hmm. question to break the ice matthews talk to us so my question for you is of course, we deal, we dealing with it right now in um, the journalism, of broadcast communications type of field. But I know not only in Oswego and a bunch of other colleges, this isn't just in our major, it spans out to everyone else's major. So have y'all seen in Oswego and, or have y'all visited another college or anything? Have y'all seen this type of, this type of behavior, this type of act in other fields or like things like that? Yeah, so, um, my girlfriend, not to call her out or anything, but you know, my girlfriend, she's in the business field in Oswego. Os she's uh, an accountant major. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to become an accountant when she's older. Sure. And she feels as if the business professors are more comfortable and more open to talk to the white people rather than the people of color. So 
for example, I think she had a class and she treats the white people so well, but then when it comes to like, you know, including the black students and like helping them out, she kind of just brushes them off and gets annoyed at them like really fast. And that's just like, yo, like, how could you do them? Like, and it's and it's not just her, because I know my roommate has experienced things, like he's also in the business field, has experienced things with um professors like that and Rich Hall and stuff like that. So it's like like to, to think like, oh, okay, like the broadcasting field is already going through something like this. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yo, there's way more like the business field, who knows? Like mm-hmm. that something could be happening in the the, the um what's it? The childhood education department. Mm-hmm. Something could be happening there, like the adolescence education department, the human development department, like it could be happening anywhere. That's, yeah. not, that's so funny to me that you're bringing up that your girlfriend is dealing with that. Because I remember I had a um, conversation with like the chief of staff like earlier in the semester, yeah. and she talked about um, the business. I forgot what the conversation was exactly, but she brought she brought up the business department and how it's one of the best that the school has. Like like it's doing so well. Like the, the department is so prominent, and it's like everything just looks so good on paper. But it's like everything just looks so everything looks so good on paper. You're boasting about how it's one of the best. It's so great, but it's like. When you dig deeper and like develop into a personal relationships and talk to the people who are actually in it, they're singing a different tune. Yeah. So it's like, where's the disconnect? Like, why is it that everybody is saying that everything, like everything is good, but when you actually talk to people who are in it, they're telling you it's cap. You know yeah, what I mean? Different. Like, where's the, where's this coming from? I feel like they really need to talk to the students and like really try to like at least like interview or just like you know have a human resource department that talks to the students or like emails the students at least like yo like how are you feeling like about your professors about like like the people in your major are they making you feel like this is this is a comfortable class to be in like i feel like there's not enough checking checking in maybe rather and a lot of people don't care care. so i've been in a couple classes throughout my time in oswego where we spoke about history involving african-american people and like for example the prominent word the n-word mm-hmm. um i feel like uh, oswego likes to teach us a lot about the n-word and the history about the n-word um i can recall two classes i don't want to like point out any professor or anything but like those two classes i took um one was an english class one was a history class the english class stood out to me the most though because we spoke about um maya angelou and maya angelou has a lot of like poetry that talks about like our upbringing and what we went through to get to where we are now. Mm-hmm. And this one professor, like, that class is only three black people including myself, the rest mm-hmm. is just white people. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the fact that like, she was, she wanted us to say the N word. Like, I, like personally, we all told her like, yeah, we wouldn't, we don't want nobody to say the N word. Like, I didn't even feel comfortable saying the N word in class. Yeah, because we yeah, yeah. in a professional setting, so I don't feel comfortable saying that. So we just told her we could skip over that word or like we could, use another word just to not say that word uh-huh. in that setting but she was just not budging it was just like oh no like we in, like we're reading this book you're in a class setting you know i'm saying like it's okay to say it and you guys are gonna say it and then she's like the white are people you to, this is exactly. a white person she's a whole yeah, it's a white person. Like, you yeah, can't like, give people um, that didn't work hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was just like like she was saying like we in a she said like we in a class setting yeah. so like that we know that the word is not gonna be used for like any hurtful stuff and like things like that. And I get that part, like we in a classroom setting is not gonna be hurtful stuff, but it's just that word. We were like we know the rules with that word. We know who can say it and who cannot say it. And like it transfers over to that history class up to two. That same that a different professor was the same way, like, oh, he's nothing, no shade of color, he was just a white man. <laughs> and he was just saying it like nothing. And when one student confronted him about like, I don't feel comfortable with you saying that, he said the same thing. He was like, listen, you're in college, you're gonna learn about this. I'm not using it in a way that's gonna offend you. I'm using it in a way of context. Oh, and it's like, wow. I get it. I get what you're saying, but at the same time, it's like, it just, it hits different and it hurts, even though it's not, you're not trying to say it that way. Well, you know what I'm saying? You should not though. It's yeah. not yeah. derogatory to yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Are you yeah. serious? Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what I experience in Sweden when it comes to like that field of you know. Right. Yeah. Um, personally, I honestly, thankfully, I can say that um, my professors they haven't like really been in any type of way like racism wise, especially the white professors. I don't know if it's because it's a communications major. Like um, your experiences with your professors, has it been like bad? Like as far as treating um, people of color differently? in terms of the communication field? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I 
Per personally, I haven't. I can't think of her name. She's she's um she wears glasses. She's in the communication department. She was my advisor at first, and I feel like, I don't, I won't say that, but I feel like when I first met her, I thought she was racist. I thought it was just me. That's what, like whenever I have um encounter encounterments. Yeah. Is that a word? Encounter. Encounters. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> whenever I, yeah, you know, come in contact with, like, um, white people and they aren't, like, the nicest, my first, like, oh, maybe they're racist. But then it came out that, like, it wasn't just me and I think she treats, like, a lot of people kind of like that. Mm -hmm. But besides her, I switched my major, I mean, I switched my advisor to, um, Catherine Loper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Shout out Catherine Loper. She, I love Catherine Loper. Like, her, uh, Professor Ricky, yeah. uh, Professor Cleland, they've all been very, very helpful and very beneficial to me in my experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those are like the main broadcasting professors that I've had. Mm -hmm. And they've all been like nothing but very, very nice and very helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, similar to what Peyton was saying, I haven't had anything in particular, but I do resonate with her on the whole like the assumption that like maybe the white person is white automatically mm -hmm. and i had it specifically like with i feel like it's mainly with the classmates not a professor mm -hmm. and Payne like is aware like there's just this one you know white girl that i had class with like she was just very standoffish like i don't know what the vibe was and i mean i'm a confrontational person and not <laughs> like even in a static way but it's like if i said something is wrong i'm gonna approach you and ask like what's up so i was speaking to her she says like you know there's nothing but I don't know, some of them, they could be passive aggressive, but they'll be yeah. an issue and then like, once you call them out on you or have a conversation, like, now they just like, oh, no, now I don't know what you're talking about, yeah. when it's Black like, one. I've seen you roll your eyes at me when I speak, like, I've seen like, little like, passive aggressive behavior, so it's like, okay, what is it then? If there's no issue, then what was all those other things before? But, yeah, because it's like, yeah. you don't treat the other, you're white you don't, you like don't that. don't treat them like that, so, so it's just like, are you scared of black people? You've yeah. never seen a black person before? Yeah. Do you not know how to interact with one? That's like, what the main issue is. That's a lot of like, uh, not yeah. like that. They, they, they didn't grow up with white with people. Black and, that's, people. and that's not an excuse. For sure. Because I feel like as us, you know, um, I, I, I went to high school with with white people. So I, I already kind of had a feel of how they were as a, as a group. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Can I say it? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, I feel like for black students that come here and they never had, like, it's kind of like a culture shock because they're like, oh my gosh, it's a lot of white people. I feel like they still go out of their way to, you know, be welcoming. I, I feel like, um, like, extend themselves out and they aren't like, oh, you're white, so I'm just going to ignore you. Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like black people, we're very open. We're very nice. Like, I don't understand. Like, saying, saying that, oh, I, I, I didn't grow up with black people, so I, I don't know how to treat. That's not an excuse. Because I, so, I, I, I went to camp. Yeah. Yeah. Like most of my life with um with, with a lot of white people, yeah. And like I was like they were very friendly to me. They were they treated me like as like an equal individual. They didn't mm -hmm. like, they weren't racist or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it was just like you know, and they also made the effort to want to get to know me yeah, exactly. as much as I got the effort to want to get to know them, you know. Yeah. But then getting back to also with the um like with the professors in the communication department, the only thing I really see is that when put into groups. They group the minorities with each other and then like with the white people with each other. Mm -hmm. And I see, cause one time I was in a, um, I was in a media management class and like, it was a group, it was actually, Mon Monet was there, your, um, your co-host for Perspective Entertainment. I think she was in that class with us and you know, she, they put us in the groups for um, a project and it was like me with other black people and minorities and all the white people were in the group by themselves. Mm. And I was like, mm, this is kind mm, of fishy. fishy. <laughs> I don't like, I know what you see, what you're doing. And then like the topic that he gave us, cause it was like on radio, like, like listens and stuff like that. And the topic he gave us was hip hop. Mm. <laughs> and he gave the other groups like country and rock music, yeah, but we got hip hop. So I'm like, Okay, this is getting a little too fishy. Like, yeah. what, what are you trying to do here? What do you? What's your motive? Yeah, what's your motive? Like, that was the only like really weird encounter I've had. Like, I was gonna ask him about it, but again, it's like, bro, like, I, I was too uncomfortable to ask him yeah, about it because yeah. it's just like, yo, why did you give the black people hip hop and everybody <laughs> else like country, rock, and pop? But like, for the all radio listens, it was we had to do a project on hip hop and make mm -hmm. our own radio station about hip hop. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, was, I'm taking that class. Yup, yeah, we basically had to make our own radio station about like hip hop. So yeah, mm-hmm. which, which I didn't mind because like, of course I listen to hip hop, mm-hmm. but it's like still. But still, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, Matthews, thank you for sharing. Um, Naya, the last question, was that your question or is there something else that you have wanted to address? Or? Um, I guess I have a question. So like, what are some goals moving forward that you guys have in terms of like, I guess, wanting to benefit the like the black community and within the broadcasting major because like as we mentioned before there aren't a lot of black people compared to their white uh, counterparts in the broadcast and mass communications major especially i guess like you know women they're also treated a certain type of way and then us being black women at that okay. it gives us more of like a uh, a burden or like an intersect, an intersection to you know feel like we are in a safe space within the major. So like, what goals do you have moving forward in terms of that? Good mm-hmm. Oh, I was gonna go this way this time. I feel like I have an answer for some time. I actually keep Um, well, I know for me, and I say this to you guys all the time. Um, connections are important. So even though for me, like, um, because I'm graduating and we had that meeting with um, WTOP, uh, we have a group chat initiated, you have me, like, as the support, as a backbone to everything that goes on, like, within, even though I'm not there. Mm -hmm. And, like, with the experience that I have now and which I'm going to develop and, like, how far I'm going to go, like, I could, um, I feel no, um, I have no problem, like, being able to come back to the school and to, like, you know, contribute and help out in any way that I can. Like, you know, the school always talks about, you know, our Roker has a foundation and stuff like that. You know, maybe years down the line, if I become, like, you know, of, like, a certain stature in broadcasting, I have no problem, be, like, creating, like, um you know, creating, a, um like, a scholarship or, like, a um Dope. something dedicated to, like, black women in media or just, like, the black students in media. Because, apart- and the thing that annoys me about the school is that they always talk about our Roker, but there's not other people as well. Do you guys know who Andre is? Exactly. Andre is dope. He's one of our alumni and um he he actually used to be the vice president of um HBO. He's definitely someone like yes. He's an alumni. He's, yes. He has a scholarship dedicated to like freshmen and like their involvement in media and stuff like that. And Andre is definitely like a really dope person to speak to in regards to like just understanding because he was once in our position and like he understands everything. So as far as like, you know, making connections, like developing those relationships and knowing that like, even though you're still here, there's still all of us out here who went through it and are like, we're here to help you now, if that makes sense. You know, in a way, I feel like our workers like the one token black. Black! Yeah, literally, bro. It's true. Like, you know, you felt like that when I need to he is. How many times I try to look up Sunni Oswego alumni aside from Al Roker that I can try to connect with? Like, and I still haven't even met him big, since I've been here. He's not the he's not the only big shot, is what I was saying. Yeah. Like Andre, like he he did, he's doing amazing. Like VP of HBO for years, two done his well, like twenty plus years. Yeah, How come that's not being celebrated or yeah. talked about? I didn't even know about. I'm glad Andre. you told me about. You that. feel me? The way I met Andre through when I was um a part of the um when I was in Alana and he came um through during the Alana week. I don't remember what it was, but um basically like when Maggie was like um the who oversees alumni like the Alana orgs, she set up that meeting to have like dinner with Andre and that's how I met him through there. Cool. Like we have mad bro, we have mad people. Even and I feel like the only time we recognize that is through the media summit and that's just not mm-hmm. enough for me. Do you remember Imani Cruz who came? Yeah. yeah. She worked at MTV, bro. Why nobody talked? Like, wow. why are we not talking about her yeah, giving she... them the flowers and the props? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Justin Dembrow, who, who was the panelist, he works at Peacock, NBC. Like, totally. these people that's doing big shit out here, but they're not getting the credit for it. Why? Yeah. And you know then we I mean? don't know. So. Like, n- nobody know only t- until it's the media summit. Like, there's people out here. Amara Kaba, she used to work at the Wendy Williams show. She has a show with Discovery. Like, there's people doing big shit out here and nobody's talking about it. That's crazy. So our local. Oh, our local. The token bad person. And, then, and I feel like when, when they do get our work on campus, it's like, they don't include the black students. They don't, they don't include the people that they look don't. just like our broker. Like, they I don't, don't understand that. They don't. They've been doing that since freshman year. Freshman year. Like, they've been doing that for quite for like a while now. And, and that, now that you said, like, just to add on to that, that is also something that really? I, I would like to um, help others do. I mean, for, hopefully, I'm uh-huh. going keep, keep my feet crossed out. I will get the job in Syracuse. But also, I I, that means I'll, I'll, I'll be close. So I'll be able to, I would like to be a resource for sure. other students because 
it's especially black women at that because sure. I feel like you you made like a broad up well like what you said earlier and just something connected and I like I feel like as a black woman in broadcasting it's so challenging in terms of like how should we do our hair should I want to get box breaks because I'm going va- on vacation but no. I'm also about to air so, you know I'm about to be I'm going live so I don't feel comfortable enough to mm-hmm. wear my natural it, I just feel like there's there's so much um I can do we can do as as black women to like be supportive of other like st- college students that are black women that mm-hmm. also want to get a feel of the broadcasting industry but I feel like that's very important I, I don't have anyone to like kind of look up this in close proximity I guess mm-hmm. to like you know be a resource like oh like what's your opinion on this or like oh, what do I need to my hair mm-hmm. and this that and third but and I'm happy you brought, I'm happy you brought the up in vibes to the left because I remember when I was doing entertainment news, mm-hmm. I always felt anxious about like how yeah. it looked and how I'm supposed to like wow. have everything together. Yeah. But when I made when I left and I um did perfect the entertainment, I just came in as my true self. Like I would have like a nice scarf, I'll lay my edges down, and I was just comfortable. Like me, like having to um like feel conscious about how I look in the camera, stuff like that, that mm-hmm. became like least of my worries. Like that's that's like that's another thing. Like I, yeah, that's such a big. Yeah, that's and a I big feel thing. like yeah, I feel like well, I don't know if black men. I, I'm sure they do, but I feel like from my experience, yeah. it's challenging. Like it is hard. you know what I mean? Yeah, hair. I feel like hair is such a big, uh, such a big issue and such a big um, topic. Yeah. You know? That's not even that important to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, but I, and I feel like to white people, it's like for white people, it's not. But for us, it's huge. It's huge. I literally, our that's the big thing. Yeah. That's like, yeah, it's a part of our identity. It's part of just who we are. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. for people to say, oh, this this isn't professional, or like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, it's hard. Crazy. It's so hard. Right. It's so hard. Because sometimes, like even on air, when I've been on air for my show, mm-hmm. um, there be times when I'm like, oh, I got to twist out. Oh my gosh, should I retwist it yeah. when I go back on air or like do I throw a cap over it? Or like because like when I shot I didn't really need like a touch or anything, like I'll just okay. dress casually, just be fly, or whatever. Yeah. So it was just like, oh do, what do I do with my hair? Do I just leave it out? Do I put it in twist? Do I put it in braids? Like, you know, there's just so many things where I'm just like, yo, bro, like like I dead worried about that. Exactly. And then with like goals too, with um like for the broadcasting majors, like that are minorities, I feel like like with um your show breed, like perspective mm-hmm. entertainment, I feel that I want to bring that into something that's like generational. Like I want that show to be live like, on, live on. Mm-hmm. Like for, like I want to come back to the school like ten years from now, and that show is still going on. But like with just like it's like with the same concept, but they're just doing their own way now. Dope. Like yeah. yeah, because it's like we like I just wanted to solidify. The black community within WCOP, like solidify it and just like stamp it. Like you can't get rid of us. I want it to grow. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, I, I want the black community in WCOP. I, like I want that to be a thing. Yes. Yeah, because I, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm a senior. I'm graduating. And I'm just now learning that you broadcast. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's just like mm-hmm. certain people. I'm like I didn't know that. It's just so many people, and that it kind of like hurts us because that's a way for us to connect and yeah. network. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know each other at right. all. Yeah. Right. I think that um, allowing perspective entertainment to live on will open doors for the black community to want to come in because that is something that, you know, we're interested in the culture, hip hop culture and things of that nature. Yeah. So I think, you know, I would love to see it live on. And from there. <laughs> yeah, take your time. <laughs> Thank you so much for your question. And um, yeah. I guess we can move on to the next topic. But before I move on, um. I don't know if you're familiar with a sports broadcaster that you remind me of, Malika Andrews. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't mind you. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know who that is. Right. You see, like, I don't know, yeah. just black women in sports it's and black sport. women. Bro- like, I know, and, and now that you said that, um, um, I was going to say, um, like, before I got to Oswego, because I, um, I went to Catholic school in mm-hmm. Chicago, and we had a broadcasting program. So that's why that's I kind of, yeah, I'm like, well, yeah, I learned, that's why I learned my passion. Like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. I hate math, I hate numbers, I hate science, I hate no, everything else. <laughs> this is what I want to do. I, I know that this is something that I can see myself doing five, ten years from now. And so I went through, I, went, I feel like I went through weird phases where I was interested in meteorology. There was a point where I was interested in sports. Mm-hmm. But then I kind of was like, whoa, actually, I'm not, can't, like, I feel like I, as a woman, also a black woman at that, like, mm-hmm. you don't really see too many 
black women that are sports anchors or commentators. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then also, I feel like it'll be hard. For, I, I feel like it would be hard for me going into the sports world where people are going to be like, what do you know about? You're a woman. Right. And you're black. Like, what do you know about sports? Right. And it's, it's very, um, what's the word? Um, Sexist. Like, along the sexist lines? Um, like, it's just, like, not kind of discouraging. It's hard now. Uh, but I'm not going to lie. Obstacles like that are my favorite because you pr you trying to say I can't so, do it. Yeah. So watch me exactly. do it. Exactly. Right. 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 I've gotten deeper into like the learning more about broadcast and I found out I'm even more passionate about entertainment specifically mm -hmm. like pop culture and music and fashion this mm -hmm. and that third so I, I am a sports studies minor and I can't like I, like, like now that you said that like I I was the only girl in the sports class that I took uh, mm -hmm. two some like COVID year and at, at the end of the year, everybody was like, wow, like, you really held your weight. Like, you, you at the beginning of class, you said that this is not something that I, I'm not a pro in. I, I'm, I'm open yeah. to learning, you know, criticism. And I, I want to become a better sports analyst and stuff. And I, like, I, I was able to, like, you know, produce my own sports segment. I, I, I'm, I, like, I feel like I'm capable of doing the job. And it's, if it's something that I have to do, I will do it. And, I mm -hmm. like, I know that it's something that I can do. But I still love entertainment mm. more than sports. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. got you. Now yeah, I thank yeah. you again for that um, question, Brianna. What do you? What would you like to share with us? Um, I guess my um, contribution is pretty much like what? What's one like <laughs> advice that you would like? You should we should give to one another, or something that you've learned, like a key takeaway from the experience and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, just like as a broadcast major? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And just being in spaces like that, like, yeah. Okay, so um, at the end of the day, like, just, you know, deal with it in a nice professional manner, you know, mm -hmm. because I feel like, you know, black people were looked at like, oh, he's getting mad. He's just, he's just getting angry, angry black again. Man. Angry yeah. black person. Oh, like, 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 no, like, you have a right to be angry and, you know, like, like with like with the situation I just deal, dealt with, mm -hmm. oh, I just wanted to just scream, go off. Like right. I didn't even care about being professional. I was literally just gonna curse every single one of them out, just single handedly. That's good there. Yeah, <laughs> but then like, but then Brie called me and she was like, "You can't do that. Like, just deal with it in a professional manner." And like, also, um, shout out my son Zaya. She right. also said to me like, "Yo, just be calm about it right. because you need to." Yo, she tell you to be calm. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know you gotta be calm. Yeah, yeah right. no, I'm telling you. No, I'm telling you. That's what like, yo. That's she so told you funny. I gotta be calm. I'm like, telling you to chill out. Cause like, yo, I wanted to just go in there, and just tell them everything, like what was on my mind. But like, I stay professional about it. And even the way I handled it on social media, I was professional about mm -hmm. it. And I also like when I was thanking everyone for advocating for me and just you know stating like what, what position I'm in and what position like the people are in. It's like. Just stay professional, like you know, never lose your cool. Yeah. Because like, and if you lose your cool, like you, you see, you making them try to see you in that manner. And like, I understand, like you have a right to be angry, but then if you stay professional about it and you you stay in your facts and you right. being right, it's like, yo, bro, like, you really you really shitting on them. Excuse yeah. my language, you really shitting on them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like that that's one of my advice, like to just really stay professional when it comes to crisis situations like that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and just just be cool about it. Yeah. I feel like my advice is like basically presentation is threatening to some people mm. and by that what I mean is um, the way you look, the way you, like I said earlier, the way you're sitting, the way you speak, like people, like I, like I said to you, Pagan, that um, a lot of people don't expect things from you until you show them and you prove to them and then they take a step back and like, okay, wow, I didn't, I didn't expect that from you. Mm -hmm. So. That's what I mean by presentation is threatening to some people because they they swear that you can't dress a certain way, you can't talk a certain way, you can't present a story a certain way. But then when you do it, it's like, dang, um, I really doubted this person. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I should have never done that. Stuff like that. Man, I feel like that has happened. I feel like we can all agree that's happened at one point in our life yeah, oh, where sure. <laughs> people have told us like, Oh, like I thought you could come to a presentation looking all fancy and stuff, or I thought you could present a, a, a presentation without looking like yeah. slouch and stuff like that. So I feel like it's little things like that we gotta remember to do just to show people like we can do this and that picture you have of me that I'm like a I'm slouching and I can I, I can never dress professional stuff like that is not a picture I want you to have in your head because I can really do it. Yeah, yeah not a high level. Yeah, high, exactly. high level. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that because it's like 
And also like when it comes to um like minorities and like presentation and shit like that too, it's like we have like we, we really have like a lot of power I feel. We do. You know, we like we really we have really a huge do. amount of power because it's like for at the end of the day, like for the most part, we've been like fighting for what we gotta do and like to to get where we have to get, we've been fighting like our whole lives. Mm -hmm. So it's like I feel like with that comes with like grit and power and like we have a bunch of connections where it's yeah. like if something happens to one of us now you're dealing with all of us. Right. So right. it's like I feel like I feel like white people really don't have that type of connection where it's just like, oh okay, like Oh, one of us, all of us, kind of thing. Like, I don't but know. Everything's been handed to them, so it's like they don't have to fight. But they for do. us, we always have to fight. You know, I'm sorry, yeah. Pam. I, um, yeah, I was just gonna add on to that. Like, that's so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. I agree with you. I, oh, yeah. I don't want to change because I, I like I didn't. I was gonna say something yeah. to add my um mm -hmm. my perspective, but mm -hmm. I, I I don't want to change. Oh no, I was just gonna say like, as black people, we have. A voice like no other. Yeah. We really have a confident ass voice. Um, compared to some white people, some white people like to talk low and don't like to like you know really project their voice. <laughs> I feel like us black people. You see how we talking now? We yeah. talk like confidence like right. that, and that's something we gotta bring to um. Yeah, we gotta bring to table. And anywhere we go, that's how we gotta speak nice because swagger. that's the only way we can get what we gotta get is mm -hmm. the way we speak and the way we present ourselves. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's one advice I learned and I I think everybody should follow. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, what I'm gonna say is to like always stand your ground and to speak up for yourself. Mm -hmm. Speak up for yourself, because as you saw in the situation just then, like they didn't stay. Even though, like you know, the situation that happened, we expected for WTOP to like like the members that were there to step behind you, but they didn't. So you walked in, you were able to stand your ground and express yourself, and we were able to like you know move forward with the actions and everything like that. Um, another thing I wanted to say too is like, like, yeah, like going off the lines of um, speaking up for yourself, like be assertive. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. Like be assertive. Like when Monet and I started Perspective Entertainment, I remember, um, you know, we had a situation where like two of the crew members were like cracking inappropriate jokes about one of our segments. The next Tuesday that came, we clocked everybody on that floor, mm -hmm. every single body every single person we understand that this is like a black based show you may not understand but keep your comment your jokes and your shit to yourself mm -hmm. this is a platform that's dedicated to us and it's for us so i don't care if you're racist i don't care how you feel take that shit out after like from 5 30 to 7 30 when we do this show keep it to yourself mm -hmm. anything yeah. after that outside it doesn't matter yeah. yeah. but in positive light they learn the show and they embrace it and they're grateful that monet and i created the show and they also feel that that would be a good way to help lure in like students of color and bring in the diversity that like has been a problem for a long time. Mm -hmm. So definitely be assertive, stand your ground, be be yourself upon, unapologetically, and like you know support, give support to those who feel timid and like feel that they don't have a voice. Dope. I was gonna say yeah to add on to that definitely be a, yeah be assertive. I've learned that being working at my internship mm -hmm. and I feel like broadcasting and just working in news. That is, is, this is a, a job where you need to, and I'm not saying like you have to be an all and just boss yeah. everybody around because nobody yeah. likes working with those type of people. But definitely, you know, know what you're talking about, be confident. And on top of that, I was going to say be yourself. I feel like as black people that go to PWIs, we've learned how to cold switch. Mm -hmm. We've learned how to. <laughs> yo, word, <laughs> like, yo, oh my. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Y'all know what I mean. Y'all yeah. know what I mean. Like, I just feel like, and cold switching is important to an extent because I also feel like we need to be our true authentic selves because yeah. I feel like that's how the world deserves to get that piece of ourselves where we're yeah. ourselves and you know can show our personality and um that's another thing that I'm starting to like about like the new broadcasting industry where I feel like five ten years ago everything was hard hard news hard news hard news mm -hmm. no bias no personality no nothing mm -hmm. but i feel like now we have the opportunity to have entertainment shows and have our own ops in regards to wtop and mm -hmm. you know just show our personality because that's what makes us different that's what mm -hmm. makes us unique that's what directors and people that own companies broadcasting companies that's what they want at the end of the day so you see how earlier you was like um robin roberts is like someone you look up to or something like that yeah. i feel like she's a good example of somebody who does what we want to do and put some personality to it put some flair to it because i don't know i just watch throwback videos of news broadcasts like from the 90s and stuff and it's literally like, just a person it. saying the news like yeah. Yeah. there's so no it's no color no, it's just no, black no nothing yeah. 
oh my fault, but um, somebody like Robin Roberts though, it's like she gives us the news we know about her, but that's at the same time we know about her life too. We know she's a cancer survivor. We know she's part of the LGBTQ community. She makes it known, and like her presence is like she makes giving telling the news like either sad, either happy, either like you get mad at it. It's like she brings that emotion to it, and I feel like that's something. It's like relating what you said. We should all do when we're giving the news or we're doing something related to that. We should all put our flair to it mm-hmm. to make it more interesting. Exactly. And to speak to what you said, I remember when I was taking BRC 329, um, Professor Ricky, and I'm grateful for him for bringing that up because we had a conversation regarding like, um, um, you know, like having the news voice mm-hmm. and like learning how to do yeah, that. that voice he track. was saying how like that voice track, he was saying like, you know, like even now, like it's becoming a thing where like the reason why podcasts are so successful now is because like, people like that people with accents like you're starting to hear the authentic authenticity mm-hmm. and the accent and i'm and i remember um like being appreciative of him recognizing that because i remember telling him that you know for someone like me who's from the bronx and because i already have an accent it has to be like um it's extra hard it's an extra um what am i saying like it's extra work i have to put in to develop and learn that reporter voice that, yeah. as opposed yeah, to my true. white counterparts who literally sound like that yeah. Yeah. and he acknowledged and said that it's true so that's that's definitely yeah. mm-hmm. contributes to the personality yeah. like it's not my fault that i sound like this mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah you know yeah embrace it embrace it and be yourself you know because yeah we and i feel like that voice track I, I, it took me a while to get my my professional voice track but yeah i just feel like like you said, that's accents and that just that makes you you. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I would hate for you along with other people who have accents or you know are from Chicago or have southern accents or whatever. And they they are passionate about TV production, but that's what's holding them back. You know, like oh I can't because oh I won't get this job because mm-hmm. I talk different mm-hmm. than. And I feel like I, that's why I'm grateful that. We're entering a new year. It's 2022. Like, it's a new generation. And of course, we're all from... Every, everybody's going to be from everywhere. Mm-hmm. That, that voice track is boring, though. You know what it I mean? Like, it is. And I feel like, like the accents, it brings vibrance. Vibrance. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's a, exactly. Seasoning. Yeah. Like, real vibrant. <laughs> like, it's, it's, real, it's, real, it's real vibrant because it's like... Oh, you got these people from these different types of backgrounds, and then they sound like this, and they're bringing that energy. Yeah. Like, yo, like, like this is great. Not, yeah, yeah. How could you not want this? Yeah, how could you change your channel? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like you on the news, and then they bringing that energy. They 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 talking to you like they want you to know, and they want to be here, and they uh-huh. want to make you feel comfortable. Exactly. Like they want to make you feel like we just talking on the couch, and I'm just venting you the news. Right. Yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. Like that's the type of vibe that needs to be in the news industry. Mm-hmm. Right. The people that believe in you are going to look past the accent and just hear what you're saying. Yeah. Right. So, Brianna, thank you so much for that topic. Uh, we're doing pretty good with time. We're at 48 minutes. Pay in. Okay. Talk to me. Um, so, my question for you guys, and also you, Andy, you can chip in if you like. Talk but you. um, what are your pros and cons of attending a PWI? <coughs> we've, uh, yeah, we've talked about our experiences, and unfortunately, we have experienced, you know, kind of negative um encounters and just like whoa that made me sad like that made me feel some type of way like that didn't make me feel good the center third with that being said i feel like however there are some positives with the tenant of pwi <laughs> and to start i would say a lot i mentioned it earlier but i love our resources mm-hmm. i love like um them too like you know there's through these camera equipment and stuff that we check out those, that's what doesn't know that they're expensive <laughs> they're a lot of money that's why i be trying like whenever i see people and i'm recording i'm like please i can't afford it like i can't pay for this <laughs> but uh, along with just like our resources and i mentioned earlier that like uh i've been able to count on our my broadcasting professors professor loper ricky mm-hmm. cleveland like there was a time where i think um a lot of different broadcasting classes were checking out equipment it was like near finals week or something like that yeah. and i i made it i tweaked i did not check out my equipment in time and i'm like oh shoot like i don't know what to do i don't know where he went he was like i'll be right back i don't know where he went <laughs> and he came back like five ten minutes later and he was like here i got to the cage and just said yo no take i was in the cage oh he was in the cage i, I mean oh, yeah, yeah. you could have to a p2 and yeah. he didn't run out of equipment so yeah. while he's from there yeah, yeah. yeah. i don't like i don't know um, i was like wow they like he literally went out of his way to help me accomplish my project you know what i mean so i feel like y'all know Unfortunately, um, we've experienced a like, little like some negative moments. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I I'm grateful for the positive experiences that I've 
Mm-hmm. Experience that I speak of. Mm-hmm. I feel like, oh, oh, uh, nah, you good. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I feel like some pros, like there, there is like one professor I really mess with, my boy Francisco Swamp. Uh, yeah, my boy Francisco. Shout out Francisco Swamp. Yo, that's, that's really my man's, bro. Like, yeah. the girl, yo, I love really the goat. Like, he's like he's such a big help. Like, mm-hmm. he was a help to me, like in video production, and he's like so positive. Like, he he's the only professor that made me feel. Like he wants to see me succeed, yeah. and like he, like he's even talked to me privately. He's like, "Yo, like one time I gave him like a project that could have been better." He even said, "Like, yo, look, Justin, I know you're talented, and I know what you're capable of, and you give me way better than this. Mm-hmm. And like, you could like, and I know you're gonna accomplish what you need to accomplish when you get out of college." And I'm just like, "Yo, bro, like he was really the first professor that made me feel like at home, like that I could really do this, yeah. like that, I, that I, to not give up, and that's really yeah. important." Yeah. And like, also another pro of like attending a PWI is like. The, it, it could be a pro and a con or a sense, but like your community is small, but like y'all back each other up uh, to the yeah. end. Like y'all, y'all not letting nobody like push you around. Like you go to your black community, you go to the the Atlanta orgs, you know, you, you, like LSU, VSU, CSA, two and a half, you know, like all these orgs mm-hmm. where it's just like yo, like we we got your back, you know. And like there's so many people behind you that at the end of the day, it's not gonna feel like oh we're the seven percent. Well, five percent now <laughs> of the black community at Student as we go, we like we feel that like we're the seventy percent and eight or five percent. Right, mm-hmm. it does feel like that. Yeah, so but then like you know of course cons, like, you know, when it comes to some professors, they might they may be a little racist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I I personally oh, yeah. I, again like haven't experienced this, but like I know people who have experienced it that they could be a little racist or you know, just again with the inclusion thing, like they, they'll exclude you because like of, of the color of your skin, like that you are a minority, yeah. and like that you, oh, like yeah, this person doesn't matter, the other person matters. Like it's like that, just little things like that. Yeah, because why other? What other reason why will they exclude you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're you, you've been, I've I've met you through WTOP. I know that you've been in WTOP since freshman year, yeah. your freshman year. So it's like you like put in this dedication and commitment and all this hard work just for them to exclude you out of like out of something that you were a part of. How? Yeah, what other true. reason could it be besides your skin color? That's and I just feel like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like yeah, that that is, and for them to say, oh, it was an accident. Ugh, how? Like it was was how? it really an accident? Like was it? Like what? Well, how? Like that's just not. Just, even Merrick said it in the meeting. Like that's not something that shouldn't have happened. That should yeah. not have happened. Right. That's why in the meeting I kept emphasizing and going like this because it's like, how do you just let something so slick like that? Like yeah. you just you just don't. There's no other reason. No that's other not, reason. I can't think of another reason. Because I, I guarantee you, if it was a mistake and it, like and I was white. They would have changed it and it, like changed it not just like how the way they changed the article and just straight up like you get in his story you ain't getting my story too right. like yeah. you know don't just include my name like I want you to include like like his story too like that's nice mm-hmm. but like also like but from my perspective like because to, to sit here and just listen to one man that has a co-host about an article and just get his whole story and say this is good I'm gonna release this but not get Justin's opinion. Cause, but this already sounds amazing. Right. This is gonna go viral. Like, mm-hmm. what are you thinking? Like, I'm just trying to like, like I literally sat down at home. Like, how did how did he go about thinking of this? And the only thing I can relate back to, I'm like, this gotta be a little racist. Yeah. This gotta be a little racist. Definitely for sure. Yeah. Um, a follow on to my point because you, we were bringing up professors, and I just gotta emphasize how important Suarez is to me. <laughs> yes. No, so, Bro, I love Suarez. Our boy Suarez. He, um, what you call it? When me, we we had the same class, and that was the first time when Justin Man was the first time I met him. And like, he's that I like professors where like, yeah, I'm the student, you're the teacher, you gotta teach me and stuff. But I like professors who sometimes ignore that and like tell you the real things. Yeah. Yeah. Teach you, teach you, yeah, yeah teach you with the real, with their real voice and stuff like that. Yeah. And I feel like that was Suarez. Like, if if something was bad, he wasn't gonna tell you like, oh. It's bad, but yeah, you can bad. work. He told you, yeah. this is very bad. I <laughs> would like for you to restart, yeah. and this is how you can restart. Yeah. And I like that because he told me that. I improved on it. Boom, we passed the class. We kept the pushing. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm not trying to be biased or anything, but as president of LSU, he's the advisor of LSU, so it's like I know him at a, at a, at a more, like, personal level now, and it's like he's just, like, the one person I know that, like, on campus for like advisor wise besides like nagging them that I know if I need to like really talk my shit regarding what it, whatever it is I can go to him 
and he's just gonna give me that like raw advice like ah this is the yeah. truth i'm sorry to tell you but this is it mm-hmm. and um it's like what justin said suarez and like, him being hispanic i'm also hispanic like i get that little piece of home yes. and mm-hmm. i don't know Suarez is just like a great professor he just brings that comfortableness into the mix and stuff like that but i try to say about suarez and, wait wait yeah. and 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 he from Queens too, like yeah, he's from Queens. He, he does live in Jackson Heights too, like he really from Queens. Like he, yep. QGTM, I always got to say too much. He's been working on Sweden for a while, oh, wow. yeah. and he doesn't, he don't really be getting. Yeah, he got his own podcast. You know, he's, he, he's great, and like this is no shade on Oswego, but or any other professors, but I see a lot of other professors getting the shine like that. But Suarez, I don't see him getting his flowers as much as the other ones do. So I don't know. I feel like Oswego got to really look at. Yeah. They're like great. Yeah, yeah, shouting out these professors from that major. But I feel like there's professors like Suarez too that should get their flowers and should be like pointed out. Because mm-hmm. the only time I ever see Oswego point them out is Hispanic, Hispanic heritage mouth when yeah. they put them everywhere. Suarez here, Suarez there. Okay, but he needs to know all year round. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But my pros and cons from being in this is that. I'm a I'm a storyteller and I like hearing people's stories mm-hmm. and I feel like since we are in a predominantly white mm-hmm. institute, the small percentage of white people that I've met that actually were like, you know, like they didn't run me the wrong way, we were cool and stuff like that. They told me some stories that it defeated what I actually thought about them. You know, we all we all think about white people as like upstate mansion, they get money, you one call like that, any money, boom, yeah. I got you. But then there's white people who yeah, they upstate, but they don't really got it like how we think they got it. Right. And hearing those stories from those people, that has made me open my eyes like, wow. Yeah. Like, okay. Evil. Yeah, we are human. Yeah. I can relate to you. Yeah. And it's weird. And we rarely say that, like, I can relate yeah. to a yeah. white person. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can relate to you. And the yeah. small yeah. amount of people, yeah, you'd be surprised. The small amount of people I actually met who, like, actually, like, stuck with me, they taught me some things that I'm like, Damn, I thought I had it bad. You, you have it more bad than me, and it's like, look where you are now. So I'm proud of you. So just hearing those stories from them, it made me like, okay, yeah, I'm in a predominantly white institute. Damn, but the white people, some white people here, they actually cool and they actually, they they worth it. They worth right, listening right, right. out to, worth telling your story to. And then I feel like a con is there's the small percentage of white people who don't care about your story, and it's like they hear you out and they're like, oh, okay, big shit, like all right, you right. here now. Do something right, about right, it. Right, yeah, right. I, I was like, I, I just thinking about it right now. Just getting mad. He's like, yeah, like yeah. I don't, don't brush off my story. Yeah. My story's important. Yeah. I want everybody to hear my story. I don't care if your story's better. I don't care if you got it this way, that way. Don't brush my story off. Right. Listen to it. Take it in. Think about it. Then we can move on. But don't listen to it and eh, I got it better. Move on. I don't right. like that. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a pro for me is that like I think being a part of WTOP and also like her campus and like you know like a lot of these um organizations that are predominantly white Mm -hmm. it just prepared me for the real world and I remember talking about it in my her campus article like my experience as a member in WTOP like what literally what I'm going through here I'm gonna I know what to expect in the real world it's only gonna get whiter like truthfully It's, it's always gonna be like you know more of them and less of us so based on like um what i went through here and like how to navigate these things i know like i feel like confident and ready and know what to do like when i step into like the professional market like i know how to like um set boundaries i know how to speak Mm -hmm. up for myself if i don't like something i'm gonna address it i know how to be assertive and like really be like aggressive when necessary Mm -hmm. um i think another pro for me is that like it's a very well let me start with the con the con is just like the environment like I feel like there's not much here to do, but the pro of that is that it's a focused environment. It's going to make you tap in and really focus on what you need to get that's done. That's true. That's that makes true. sense. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's what mine's are. Um, I guess I'll answer. I know the con for me, um, it sounds cliche, but I mean, sometimes you just get lost being around like, all the white people. Yeah. Uh, you don't know where to say, like, if you're not educated or if you don't know people that's like, they look like us. It could be really hard to like navigate. Coming to SUNY Oswego, it could be it could feel like like you're lost in the middle of a map. But I feel like the pros is like when you are educate yourself or you get to meet these people that have the same experience like you, it's like so rewarding because it's like you have people that you can relate to, people that you can confide in that look just like you and that like Justin said, like it makes the minority feel like the majority. And I really feel I really feel that way, like especially this year. 
this first year I started going to like programs in person and start like really like reaching out to people that look like me. I feel like um like the major like the min- the minority of like African Americans and like other minorities here in Oswego, they feel like the majority. I feel like I feel more people that like me in Oswego than I've ever seen before. So I feel like that's one of the big pros. Yeah. Gotcha. So um I guess to wrap it up, I will ask you guys my question. Um so shout out to my boy Mamadou. Um, he's part of the reason why I left WTOP and decided to pursue my own endeavors because I saw that he had his own um, sports sports um, writing website called Hoops Views. And uh, I was like, hey, if he could do it, because I didn't know anybody else that could do it. I remember I would be around these white people and they would tell me, oh, you have to have a blog or you have to have this and you have to have that. And I never knew what it was, but he was the first person that actually showed me what he was doing and he offered to allow me to write with him. And for, for that, I'm forever grateful. So me and him, we went hand on hand on this question. Um, so I guess for Brianna and Peyton, let's say we take it back to 2018. Matthews, Justin, let's take it back to 2019. Knowing what you know now about your experience being a black media student in Sunio Oswego, what would, what would you have done differently? So, uh, yeah, would you like to, would the graduate side like to answer first, or would you like to answer first? Um, I find it funny how we like evenly split. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we don't need. I think, um, hello, let me think. Uh, so this is a good question. Yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah, wow, well, check out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. Damn. Um, Damn. I feel like Cause I, I feel there's like. There's a few things. I can't, well, I, I gotta think a little bit more, but like. Just, yeah, since I'm graduating, I'm like, oh, man, like, I wish I would have did this. I wish yeah. I would have... I, I think I kind of got it. Or uh, like, what I think how I can answer this question. Um, So right now, I feel like I'm way smarter than I was in freshman year when I first came here. Oh, like, sure. I definitely have more knowledge. People say, like, I speak more articulately. And, like, I, I speak more with confidence and, like, in my wording and, like, how I know how to speak now. So if I were to go back to freshman year with all the knowledge I have now... First, I would have been creating a platform like Persp- Perspective Entertainment or like try to do something like that for Perspective Entertainment in my freshman year and just keep it going. Yeah. Like, and just keep it going to my senior year and just keep having all the freshmen that come in that are broadcast students that want to get involved. Season after season. season. Yeah, season after season, season, season after season after season. Yeah. Keep just going. keep it going. Like I would literally push that initiative. Like I, all that stuff that would that, that happened to us in freshman year with, mm-hmm. oh, you need makeup to go on. Oh, yeah. All that crap. Not to mention COVID and everything. Yeah, not to mention COVID and stuff like that. Like, if COVID had never happened, like, stuff would, I feel like stuff would have been way different too. Like, this would, I feel like this would have been addressed, like, before, like, earlier. Probably been addressed earlier if COVID would have never happened. So, but, you know, Mrs. Corona had to do his thing. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like with all the knowledge I had now, I would have done differently. I would have, like, expressed more of a platform of black people, you know? Like, just like, like, See what we go through. See how we act. You know. See see what we do for fun. Not what what they do for fun. Just just like you know. Just whatever you know. I don't I don't know how to explain it more. But like I, I what you mean. yeah, because yeah. some of the stuff they talk about like it's, it's, it's just it gives nothing. It's, it's yeah. nothing. It gives nothing. Yeah. yeah. Like I was like I was Sorry. exactly like right. it gives nothing. Like yeah. what are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Why are you talking about cats with pearls? I didn't care. <laughs> like I understand. No, that really that hit me. Because. Like, <laughs> Yo, I'm bro. No, I'm not even going back. No, I understand. Yes. Like, I get it. Let's talk, bro. Yes. Because like, in entertainment news, yes. when I was doing entertainment news in my freshman year, yeah. like the stuff that they try to make us talk to talk about, and then like we we literally like in my my whole um, panel was black. It was me, Samantha, and Deanna. Shout out Samantha. <laughs> shout out Deanna. But we literally like have an all black panel, and they're giving us. Topics like I don't know who was giving this topic, but they just put the topics down. It's like six topics, and it was like, oh yeah, um, I, like I forgot the celebrity's name, but like I guess like their dog died, right? <laughs> and, oh, what's up? Sorry, that's not funny. I think I remember you telling me. The you, I told you about yeah. this. I told you about. I, t- I think I told y'all both about this in freshman year. Yeah. But it was just like, yo, like, like I, it was like a dog dying, and then I said. So I was in the show with Lady Gaga. Yeah, it was Lady Gaga. Yo, it was like it was Lady Gaga's yeah, dog dying. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I literally said, like in the room, the the room that you prepare all your stuff yeah. in before you go into the studio. I'm like, no one cares about Lady Gaga's dog dying. Respectfully, I know mad people who's lost animals. Like I lost a turtle. Like 
Like, I, they know what he crying for me. Would you like to come back in? <laughs> yeah, like I lost a turtle. Ain't nobody crying for me. And my turtle, like ain't nobody crying about that. So it's like, bro, like I, I know none of that matters. And the person I know would be like, no, but like that, that dog really had an impact on her life. I'm like, what do you know about her? What do you know about her that this dog had such an impact that on her? Yeah. I don't understand. Like the, again, uh, uh, and if that's another thing, like I would bring different, more broad topic or nice. Better topics to WTOP for the entertainment industry, mm-hmm. like for the entertainment mm-hmm. perspective of yeah. um, WTOP. That's what I also would have done differently. Um, to p- piggyback off what you were saying, because and it's interesting to to hear that now, how like they just gave it to you, and you had to deal with it. Yep. For me, John joining entertainment news, like we had more of a choice to pitch stories as well. That's, yeah. But I feel like the issue with that was that they never really. I feel like it wasn't really communicated to us. It's like that you have the opportunity. That you have the opportunity. That. Like it wasn't an expectation for us to just come to the table with it too. If yeah. that makes sense. Like it's like the producer is doing their thing. By the time you come down, the, the um rundown is done. Already done. All the stories are in each block, and they just want us yeah. to just research it up or mm-hmm. pick from out of the three and do it. But it's like no, and it came to a point where like the story started to become like repetitive or like it was just very whitewashed, white yeah. centered, like. Yeah. I no, I don't want to talk about these things. And a lot of the times too, it's just like the stories didn't have a significance mm-hmm. or a prominence or just weren't meaningful, you know. Mm-hmm. So being a part of um that now, and I guess for me, what I would say that if um like if I one thing number one I would say is that I would have joined earlier because mm-hmm. I well initially my plan was to join the VTOP my junior year, but then COVID came, mm-hmm. so I'm at home panicking, stressed out, trying to figure out how I'm gonna get an internship, how I'm gonna get the experience. Mm-hmm. So I came back senior year, grinded it out, like did everything that I had to do that entire entire school year, like you know time. entertainment news, like doing that for one semester, producing my own show, and then pretty much um like trying to do everything I can within producing my own show because that's where I have like more flexibility and freedom to do what I want to do because I'm behind the scenes I'm learning the production stuff I'm also an anchor so because I'm hosting the show I have guests come in I can like um I'm doing the interviews and stuff like that and then I'm also like reading the stories like giving the news and things like that so Mm -hmm. I think for me if I had if I joined earlier I would have had more time to be able to like get a feel of everything if that makes sense because i got most of the experience through the classes but i feel like putting it more into practice in wtop that would have made me a little bit more um well equipped even though i have the skills now and stuff but i feel like being like having had that more earlier, experience yeah, yeah earlier on i feel like that would have been um better for I, me um and I, i'll answer but before i answer i want to say because I, I i am the host for entertainment news and i'm also the assistant producer so maybe that's why but like yeah um the producer jack like we've come to like he's he's really nice but like we've come to like an agreement that like we kind of like produce it together and like um so i do have the opportunity to like pick the stories and find more meaningful stories besides a uh, celebrity's dog that nobody knows but yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. but yeah 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 so, but it's it, like i feel like the ambiance and in regards to entertainment news it's, it's definitely different compared to what you mentioned earlier because i was also on i was a panelist uh pre-covid and then covid happened with samantha yeah i, I remember and then covid happened yeah. and then now I'm, I'm hosting so i was a reporter for that you sure were oh my goodness yep. you sure they threw were. me into reporting but i didn't know how to report <laughs> yeah that's crazy but yeah it's just yeah i, I feel like it's definitely um has changed yeah. which yeah. is good but to answer your question, I think I would, because I, I started WTP freshman year, fall freshman year, and I feel like what you mentioned earlier, I, if I could go back, I would be more present, I guess, be mm-hmm. more here, I'm Peyton, this is like, you know, I, this is what I'm going to do, this and the third, because coming in, I, I, I had broadcasting experience for, uh, from high school, so I don't know why I was so like, um, like, so nervous or like felt like I, I didn't deserve it but I went in and learned um I was like teleprompter operator and cameraman for like for like the first year even though I, I knew how to do it already it's just I feel like I I would go back and you know report and assistant producer and produce and anchor this and third because that's real that's really what I want to do and also to add on to that I was going to say um it may a uh, Brought back a memory when I was a teleprompter. Do y'all remember Dan Corlett? Oh, yeah, I remember Dan. Shout, Shout out Dan. Dan. Shout out Dan. I, I, I like him, but like I felt like I was just so like not seen when I uh, did the 
when I operated the, both the camera and the teleprompter, mm -hmm. like I've introduced, I, I introduced myself to him and he was a, a bunch of name. times. But he was just so like teleprompter, teleprompter, teleprompter. Yeah. That I'm not teleprompter, but he was painted. Like, yeah. But I'm a human, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Was and like that, and kind of, yeah. Was like him and Shelby and them, they were like Shelby, the big hitters. Yeah, and it kind of, yeah. it kind of like made me feel so I'm small because it's like. Like why can't you remember my name? Like yeah. I feel like my name is a complicator or anything. Like mm -hmm. like why can't you remember? Is it because I'm black? Like you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Like because you, it, 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 you just don't care. Them, yeah, and then at the end of the day, it does. Unfortunately, it's the truth. It, they, it does. They, he didn't care enough to to know my name, to know what I wanted to do in WTOP, and to just like ex he never extended himself out. A lot of them didn't really extend themselves out to to me, and it mm -hmm. just made me feel like. I just wanted to be in the corner. But even though this is what I want to do, I want to be in WTOP, it kind of, like, forced me into, like, a small circle. But I feel like the, like, COVID, I, I also was a part of WTOP when things went virtual. So I got some experience with that. And it just, like, yeah, just making your presence known and stuff. I would do that. I would have done that sooner. Mm -hmm. I think, um, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> going back to, I don't know his name, but the person that you worked with, um, and a lot of times when there are people, I guess, like they're above you and they feel as though the, like for you as an example, you were like, I guess below him in, like, yeah. in terms of yes. position, they, they do that a lot. So like I, like you said before, I think it's really important just letting your name to be known, mm -hmm. especially, you know, people like us as we are, this is the conversation that's about, so like, you know, mm -hmm. it's very important. And it's one thing that I, I myself, I'm learning being here. Mm -hmm. Um, what I would have done differently, or I wish I would have known, was to not be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, mm. when I first entered September of 2019, my freshman year, um, I just, like, I, things that are happening now happened in my freshman year. I saw it. Me and Andy would be in the, in the office and we'd just be looking at each other like, ah, oh, this is, this is going to be the next four years and we're just mm. going to have to, like... It's uncomfortable, but we don't. Yeah, it's dude, just it's us too. It's like I hate it here. Yeah, but I but love I it. Wanna, yeah, <laughs> like me and I do be there. I do be doing sports. I'll be doing my news right here. Look at each other. It's like it's, we're the only two ones here. I don't want to quit because this is what I want to do. But it's like exactly. I'm mad uncomfortable. Yeah. And it's like I couldn't do nothing about it. But I feel like what's happening now. If I would have like. If I would have done this freshman year, then I wouldn't have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I could have just spoke up and then rally people like, you feel this way, you feel this way, right? Let's yeah. let's like make a change. Mm -hmm. Um, And like what Andy said earlier, shout out to Dan. Like, I'm sorry for him, but like, I, my yeah, thing I, I hate him. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, he right, was a nice right, right. person, yeah. but it's just like certain things he would do, and it's like, like I'm a student, like you know. No, I, yeah, I understand yeah. that because that happened in my first semester. Like I felt like he didn't know me neither. Mm -hmm. But then spring semester came around, and that's when I was like, I look, you don't want to do news no more. I look, you want to branch out to my OP as well. And that's when mm -hmm. um me and Kara was speaking to him, and he was kind of the one that was like, Why don't you do a minority show? Okay. And we was like, Okay, the bigger picture. And he was oh. like, Yeah, like go ahead with that. And then after that, he started knowing my name, and he knew Kara's name, and then he was like the driving force for our show, oh, like. Oh. And that's why I kind of wish we had more people like Kim today in WTOP because he was really on our side. And like, he made it sure like he was on our side. Like when we told him we wanted a my like, it didn't, it didn't even have to be all black, but just people who kind of relate to us, be the crew. He was like, I got you. And he put together a fantastic crew. I think one of the greatest crews I've ever seen in WTOP. Um, the, you see what I said today about a commercial? I, I didn't know we had a commercial. I've never seen a commercial about yeah. the bigger picture. That's the first thing he told us when we first started the bigger picture. He was like, I'm going to make you a commercial. And we never saw it because then our first episode after that, COVID hit. COVID. Yeah. So we never got to see that commercial. But he was like, I'm going to make you a commercial. You're going to see it. And then he was the one helping us create the schedule, right? The first episode, you'll have this person. Next schedule, next episode, you'll have that person. And it was like, I don't know. If we had somebody like that to date them to a P, maybe just maybe we wouldn't be going through this right now yeah. Yeah. where we like oh we don't have nobody on our it really feels like right now we have nobody on our oh, team on our side bro. but oh, oh. yeah but that person did that he was someone i felt like was 100 on our side and was that as rallying for us to like get what we had to do and make them to be wtp diverse not to mention i'm sorry i'm spreading information here but he didn't fuck with nobody don't you tell me yeah, like he, he did it was just him and curtis they was like that oh, so he was goodness. yeah it was so he went he did what he had to do. He told these niggas, I'm not friends with you. I'm just here to get this work done. 
Boom. When it was time to close down the state the studio, he told everybody, get out. That's it. Mm-hmm. This is done. We done for the night. No, because don't get me wrong. There are a couple of them that in WTOP that mm-hmm. are actually cool. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for example, are, um, Landon. 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 That's my guy. I heard a lot about that him. That is my guy. Yeah. Yo, he yeah. is so easy to work with. Like, really cool. And helpful. Super chill. Very helpful. Mm-hmm. And he peeps it, too. He be like, nah, WTOP is dead-ass toxic. Like, so there are, like, despite, like, I guess going back to the pros and cons, like, that's definitely like a pro there how there are a couple of them that are there they see the nonsense and like they taking what they can out of it and like you know we can speak to them so i so i do agree with you about having like done more of them like but earlier like mm-hmm. within the mm-hmm. school year yeah. yeah well coming in that year i didn't really have the opportunity to mm-hmm. like gain any type of experience because of the shutdown and everything and i was just so locked in my room but one thing I can say that changed for sure, I guess, uh, was probably my personality and like I was more timid to, um, it's very weird because like the person I am, nobody would ever expect that I go into this major. So like it's really taught me to not be afraid and to really be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And like even this situation, it has taught me to, you know, not being afraid to stand for what is right, especially being that we are a minority and we are we have to use our voices you know mm-hmm. as much as we can gotcha so yeah thank you so much for that um before i end off i do want to thank you guys for taking the time out y'all day to come chop it up with me i do appreciate y'all for allowing me to have you on my platform like i said you guys are all Every single person that I'm looking at here, and shout out to Keek, she's Kiara, she's not here right now. But you guys have supported me in some sort of way that you know I appreciate more than you know. So this is like a thank you to you guys for you guys to get this stuff off your chest. So before we close out, it's not a the whole journal episode without the talking shit segment. So <laughs> anything you want to get off your chest, anything that uh, anyone you want to shout out, the time is now. The record is ten minutes, but we you know we press for time, so. The floor is young. Tell the people what they want to hear. It's <laughs> <laughs> like you want to start, just go ahead. Like, see, so it's the talk about shit, right? Uh huh. Hey, man. <laughs> These people right here, all of us sitting right here, mm-hmm. you gonna have to know our names from now. All right, because we gonna be big in this media shit. All right, there's like, there's, like I'm not gonna lie, like Keeks too. Shout out Keeks, like we all gonna be big in this media media stuff. All right, like mm-hmm. we're gonna be names that y'all know in the future. Mm-hmm. So like I don't care if it's biased to anybody, but straight up, that's what it's gonna be. Like these people right here have really like helped me, reached out to me, and like they've been mad supportive of me. And like I'm very supportive of them and anything they do. And you and he, like you gonna be mad big, bro. Yeah. Like you gonna be mad big, bro. Uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, like, you, that's really like 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 the positivity I gotta have had to get off my chest real quick because like I, I feel like I want to thank y'all. Like, you know, because like I know we all of us we're gonna do our thing for real. Well, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, is there anything you wanna say? Matthew? Um talking shit. Okay. I I don't gotta, I feel like I talk about enough shit right now. Yeah, I feel like I But if we're trying to wait for WTOP, I need to kind of zoom in on me real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me. Yo, I just need to, everybody to know we in finals week right now, graduation week too. <laughs> shit is getting down to the nail. It's getting real stressful out here. These professors need to chill. I had two finals from one professor a paper and a 50 question test. Yes, two oh, finals. Two finals. So all I'm saying, 50 questions is crazy, I know. So all I'm saying is, you know, we got this. We almost done. We pushing through. Congrats to the graduates and stuff like that. But professors, yo, chill. Chill. Please, please, please. chill. The library is getting packed as the days go. There's no more space in that damn library for people to study. No, I'm sick no of it. I'm no, sick. There's no more space. I'm trying to stop. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. There's I've been no here. Space. I've been there at this point. Every cubicle is packed. Every couch chair packed. You're in denial. Yes. Like, no. You see that's right, bro. Every I'm computer tired. failed. Every couch <laughs> failed. Every desk <laughs> failed. Hey, what's this? I'm tired. I've never seen it like that before. Oh, no, bro. It's like that right <laughs> now, bro. That's why I just go to the clubhouse in the comments. 
Even that's getting packed too. Yeah, that's getting packed too. <laughs> I'll be trying to go to the little cubicle rooms. They Yo, all packed up. I, I believe it or not, believe it or not. Yesterday I went to Atlanta again to do my to do a final. I went to a, one of those, you know, I think it was one on one. Yeah, I was chilling to do the final. And it is what it is. It is what it is. Oh, I got you. Uh, anything else you guys want to share? Um, I think for me, what I'm gonna say is that um, faith without words is dead. Like mm-hmm. you gotta put in work. Like have the faith is what keeps you going. Do what you gotta do about the but at the same time you gotta put in the work. Yeah. Faith, work, that's gonna get you like yes. the fruits of labor, you're gonna see everything that what you manifested and put in the work for. Another thing too, the higher you and being a part of this industry, like when you're doing well, y'all y'all are gonna start to see because I personally experienced this so far, but like people's gonna start to hate, bro. Mm-hmm. Well, I was people's about to just bring that up if you did, bro. People's gonna hate it, bro. But now it's like because they hate and it's because you're doing a damn good thing yes, and like right. the higher you go the more hate the you're more gonna get so and don't let it I'm like, like why, don't let yes. it deter you don't let it discourage you like make, make, continue to allow that to be your driving force because like you're just gonna keep going and like you're gonna be higher like you're doing the right thing if you got haters mm-hmm. like right. really? people are always talking about people only talk about you if you're doing bad if you're doing good never mediocre so try yeah. to continue doing good yeah, sure. like i'm not gonna lie like and also to piggyback off that like really watch the people that you keep around you yeah, because sure. i feel like that this year alone i've had to cut off so many people and it's just like bro like because like you hating so much like mm-hmm. like i got like like there's positions that i've been put into that i've got like put in higher positions and i feel like I feel so much backlash from people that I de- that you dead shouldn't be hating on me. You should be happy for me. So it's like the fact that you that I gotta see people like hate on me and like like visibly. Like I've been people having people hate on me, and my mom didn't even tell me this. I've been having people hate on me since elementary school. Yeah, bro. Like, but like just just for like like for little things, bro. Like, and it's like and it's like yo, like I don't hate on anyone. I don't want to hate on people. Like, yeah. so it's just like I'm such a supportive person. The fact that someone can hate on me is like, yo, that's wow, insane. Yeah. Like that's like, wow, like yo, you really gonna hate on me? Like, like, and I'm and I'm dead. Like, don't hate you or nothing like that. Like, I'm gonna just support you. But like, really watch the people around you. Like, pay attention to the microaggressions. Like, like in everything. Like, pay attention to to the stuff that like, your friends do, or just like, and just observe. Like, just be really observant of that because mm-hmm. I've been a little, really observant this year, and I've had to cut a lot of people out of my life. So. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um. Well, if any, no one else has anything else to say. Uh, Justin, Matthews, Naya, Brianna, and Payne, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you for having us. Nice. You guys are alum. You guys, it's you and B-Love, feel me? So it's like, you guys are in special territory. But um, thank you so much again. Shout out to Kiera, shout out to Mamadou, shout out to all the people that are journalists and media mm-hmm. majors in Sony Oswego. And um, that's a wrap. You talk to me. So, hold on, can we do... Can you do the lock in with the whole journals? Yeah, I'm okay with that. So, yeah. so, yeah. so, so basically, I'm going to say my name, Matthew says his name, oh, and Naya, Nana, Peyton, and you're locked in with the whole journals all together. Like, I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say it, but I don't want to step on your toes. Word. <laughs> it's okay, shit. I'm just vibing. I'm going to do it. Yeah, so, I bet. I'm going to do it.